camera here. Oh, oh wait, I got, got it. it. So, oh, did, yeah. oh, you did. Oh, thank yeah, no you. Worries. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, so let's put this up real quick. Okay, so it says, so we have our physical and cognitive domain intervention assignment that, and then social and emotional domain intervention that we chose to research this week and then information from like our interviews is what we're sharing with each other is what it sounds like. Right? Um, okay, so who wants to go? Who wants to go first? Like sharing what they, I don't know, learn from huh? about everything. Um, I can. Okay. Um. So I wanted to, I guess, learn more about sharing, like teaching kids how to share. Because in my interview. Um, she spell woo as in woo you. Thank you. Anyways, okay, sorry. Um, Bless you. Because she teaches in preschool, and she says that the children have a hard time, you know, sharing. And I found some really cool things. Um. So I first found this uh, study um, about teaching a child with autism to share. So I figured, you know, if it helps a child with autism, it can probably help a normal child. And they, they had two interventions that they did. Because um, this was a four-year-old child with autism. And so I'm really, I'm just going up really quick so I can look at it. The, the first intervention was, hold on, I have passed it. Okay, here we are. So the first intervention they did was um, at the beginning of the play session, the instructor would sit down with this four-year-old child with autism, and his name is Jamie, and one of his peers. And the instructor would describe like the importance of sharing and explain how to do it. And then the teacher would do some examples, like two to three examples of sharing. Um, so demonstration, there we go of like a verbal sharing and physical sharing. And then after demonstrating the sharing, Jamie and the teacher would um, practice the sharing two or three times. And then as they're practicing this uh, sharing, the instructor would would praise accordingly for sharing and then the instructor guided him to perform verbal and physical sharing with the peer and then give the feedback in praise so before integrating him in with the rest of his classmates and so once they've done that the teacher would then send Jamie and the other peer to go play with everybody else, with all the other students. And then during the play, the teacher would be would watch. And for every minute he didn't share, the teacher would share a prompt, just like a, a reminder, like, well, why don't you share or something like that? And whenever he did share, the teacher would praise him. And then the second intervention, after they've been doing this first one for a while, was 
the teacher stopped preparing, priming him before he would go and play. And so instead, he would just start off with his peers. And then the teacher would just prompt him to share. So that's basically what they did is they were trying to phase it out. Um, and it did teach it. They, they found it to be effective. And I kind of liked it because since well, where is it? a lot of children have a hard time with this, I feel like the prepping gave them time, like, explain the how and the why, because I feel like when children know the how and the why, they're like, oh, that makes sense. That's what I really liked about that one. Um, do you guys have any input about that those interventions so far? Um, well, I like how they pointed out, uh, sure like telling the child the why, you know, kind of giving the purpose behind the action. Because uh, kind of like what you said, it gives the ch children a better understanding of why they're doing something, and then they're more likely to repeat that action, you know, because they understand what it's for. Um, but, so, in, I took a, a parenting class, and they mentioned that, um, like, what can you call it, uh, phrase, is that like the I don't know? Some people are for praise, some people are against praise. Uh, what do What do you think about this study? Do you think it was helped in this case? I think the praise was not necessary. Um, maybe not every time, but for a child with autism, maybe a little bit more praise. But to adapt it to like some a child who doesn't have autism or a hard time socializing, I feel like you wouldn't really have to have the praise. But, you know, nor as many prompts to remember to share. But I really liked how they had those in there so that way, like, it's okay to acknowledge. And so, like, every once in a while, just be like, hey, like, share, you know, like, so and so wants to play with this, can you share? You know, like kind of that kind of prompt. Because sometimes children get caught up and they just forget. So that's kind of what I liked about that. But Yeah, that's cool. That sounds like a really interesting study they did. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything to say, Trisha? No, you're just reminding me of my preschool. I work in a preschool with two two-year-olds in a two-year-old classroom, and so this is always a problem with sharing, and and when you're talking about, like, you know, explaining them to them, you know, about why, you know, why we should we share and, you know, stop fighting, things like that, I was thinking about that, so. <laughs> so it's a big issue. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's cool that you did this, uh, you read that study on that, that was, sounds like it was really helpful. I don't know, I usually don't like reading studies, but I actually really like this one because they get hard to understand. But, and then the second one is just kind of, um, from this, this Dr. Peters. Um, he's, he, he does a lot with parents, I think he's a type of pediatrician, or something like that. Um, but he has 11 ways to teach your child to share. And I actually really like this one um, because I like how he points out, like, number one, like, selfishness comes before sharing. So, like, to recognize that a child will, that will be, like, those toys that a child will develop an attachment to and not want to share. And so I like how he's like, us telling parents, like, recognize that this is going to happen. And then he goes on to say, like, talks about when to expect a child to share. Like, generally it's 
you know, you won't, won't expect a child to learn to share until around, like, two or so. Because of the type of play, you know, you know the brain development. And um, I like how he points out under this one that by giving guidance and generosity, like, a selfish two-year-old can become a generous three- or four-year-old. So I like how he points out it's not going to happen right away. And I like how he says um, to be, to follow the child's cues in judging when a child is ready to share because, as we all know, child each child develops differently and is ready at different times for different things. And so I like how he points that out and that even when a child is ready to share, they're going to have what he calls selective sharing. They're not going to want to share every toy because there's going to be those toys that a child just cherishes and treasures. And so I really like how he says to respect that. And if your child is having a play date or something, to go through with the child, the toys with the child, and figure out what toys he's willing to share and which ones he's not willing to share. And then put those ones that he's not, the child is not willing to share, like out of sight, out of mind type of thing, so the other child doesn't accidentally play with them. And then he also talks about like not forcing a child to share. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when you force someone to do something, they automatically don't want to do it. And so he says to create an attitude and an environment that will encourage your child to want to share. And I really like that because the environment gives, environment and attitude is what gives a ch child a cue to do something. Um, if the child is in a safe environment, they're going to more likely share because they'll know they'll get the toy back at the end of the day. And then he goes on and points out, like, to get connected, like, to have a strong attachment with your child, like, as a parent um, during the first two years because that will really help the child learn and be more generous towards other children because they'll have, they'll be more secure about themselves. And then, of course, there's the modeling. So if you want your child to share, you got to share yourself. And so, like, when someone asks to borrow something, like, make a point to turn that into a teaching moment. Like, say someone asks to borrow your pen, just be like, okay, look, I'm willingly sharing my pen with so-and-so type thing. Um, so that way they can learn and make connect the dots. And then he goes on and says, like, play games that teach sharing. Uh, like, one example he gave was, he calls it share the wealth. So you, like, give the child some flowers, crackers, toys, and ask them to share it with everyone in the room and just make a game out of it. And because play keeps the child entertained, and they learn as they're playing, and they remember it more. And then he talks about letting a child resolve, resolve like, um, oh, I lost my oh, this is a squabble, as he calls it, um, because you don't always need to step in, and by letting them do their best to resolve it, they're able to come to an understanding and willing to share it and realize that they themselves have to have some give and take. And... Then there's the usual time sharing. So, like, if you tell the child, okay, you have 10 minutes, and you set a timer, 
That way the child is like, okay, they realize that they only have so long with the toy and that it's going to be another person's turn soon. Um, and then, you know, and the last one is like provide opportunities to share. Like if you, the example he gives, because I can't think of any, I'm blanking, is like, you know, you give a child a cookie and then you ask them, like, will you please give some of this cookie to this child, to so and so? And you know, just providing opportunities like that. And I really like a lot of these because they're very simple and they make a lot of sense and they're to the child not necessarily going out of the way to teach but rather things that can be integrated into daily life. I don't so yeah, I don't know, what do y'all think? I like that. You, um, it's, I think you mentioned. I think you mentioned something about like giving a time. Like, like for example, I did that today with one of my kids. They were fighting over a book, and I gave them. Okay, I told the one child that had it originally, "Okay, you have five minutes," and then and um, I set the timer for them, and they were actually pretty good about giving the other child that wanted it. So, so that was that's cool. I thought that was cool. Uh, so that's that's really all I have. So I think it's cool how it also mentions how much the environment um <clears throat> plays a role. So if you have that positive encouraging yes, let's share what I have is yours type atmosphere, the child kind of picks up on it more. Um I don't know. I've just seen that working with kids. You can tell who's, which families are more open with like, oh, yeah, it's yours. Go for it. You know, because the kids are more willing to be like, they're not as clinging to their, like, to objects, if that makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Kelsey, what was your topic? Um, so the topic that I chose to look up and kind of focus on was about bullying and acceptance in schools. Um, I just picked this one just because for the, when we interviewed people, um, I interviewed my mom who works, she's a paraprofessional, so she works in schools with kids, and um, she's been in elementary school, so she has a lot of, like, examples of bullying and how she can tell when kids are having a hard time fitting in and feeling accepted. Um, and just, I don't know, just something that I've really noticed is that kids need a strong support system. So because kids come home from school and they relax at home. And if they're at home and they have older siblings um, that are picking on them or teasing them, then they just kind of feel like they're getting picked on and they're not really welcomed wherever they go. Um, so by having a strong, supportive family and a family that is accepting and welcoming to everyone, that helps kids with bullying. Um, my sister, I also interviewed my sister for the cognitive, physical, and social-emotional domains. Uh, she's a nurse in a pediatric hospital, and she was just mentioning how her kids, she'll see kids who, because um, she's in the rehab unit, so the kids like go to school in the hospital, kind of. And she just mentioned how bullying is a huge factor with kids there, too. Um, so I just thought, I don't know, I just figured most kids go through that phase where they don't feel accepted. And so um, what I've noticed, though, is if the kids have a strong home background, then they normally are able to, it doesn't affect them as much, whereas kids who don't have that solid home foundation, um, they kind of are more shaky when they're going through that phase. Um, so I, don't know, I just thought it was 
super interesting to see how much the home life can play a part on the child and affect how they are at school. Um, something that I think that will... Sorry, am I echoing? Do you guys hear an echo? A little bit. Okay, sorry, it's kind of throwing me off. Sorry. Um, but... Let's see what it is. Um, so kids who are, my brother went through a phase where he was getting bullied at school, in elementary school, and it was hard for him because he's like, nobody likes me, I don't want to go to school, and it just kind of affected how he was going to school to learn. Um, so I think that teachers can play a role in the in making sure children feel really accepted um, by making, if they notice kids are picking on a certain child more than the others, they kind of need to say something and stand up for the child. Um, in my, I was in sixth grade and I had a teacher come and lecture my whole class about because this one kid was getting bullied, and he came and lectured my whole class about how we were supposed to treat individuals. And, um, I don't know, it was just learning about all this now, it made me realize that teachers should intervene when it comes to that point, um, and they should help make the child feel accepted. Um, so the teachers play a role in helping the child feel, have that acceptance by inviting the child to either help in class or um, asking a certain group of kids to include that individual more and if they're playing a game of soccer or kickball or something at recess. Um, and then group work is also another way to help children feel accepted because then they'll have an excuse to interact with their peers and kind of get to establish a friendship with the peers. Um, something that I think is cool is when teachers have a, they have a class that really is a friend like, they're all friends overall, and I think that um, when teachers establish that environment in school, then bullying is, is less just because the kids see each other as friends, not just classmates. Um, so, yeah, so I just, I just think that the environment really shapes how kids, uh, if kids feel accepted or not, and that kind of shapes how the type of bullying that goes around. Um, I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I really do think that environment makes a big deal. Um, because, like, especially in the home environment, because there was this kid that used to bully my brother and his parents would like thought he was a saint so he could get away with anything he wanted to mm -hmm. and so and he knew it because his parents would still think he didn't do it and so I think that created him with the ability gave him the thought process of well I can be a bully if I want because I'm not going to get in trouble for it mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. Yeah. And you and Kelsey, you said that you had a family member as well that had that was bullied as well. Yeah, he, he um, yeah, he had like a little rough patch in elementary school. Mm. Uh, but yeah, my yeah, it was my youngest brother. Mm. It, it's hard as a person. Oh, sorry, what? Uh, there's, um, there's this website called uh, bullybusters.com. I haven't been on it in a while, so I'm not sure. I, I know it has good advice for people who um, who are in the job and they're being harassed and bullied, but I'm not. I'm guessing that they also have information on how to help people, who, children who are in school being bullied as well. Yeah, that, oh, that's good. I'll have to check out that site. Yeah, they have like an anti-bully day, and you can like buy t-shirts, and or you can just wear a blue shirt or something. It's like yeah. sometime in October or something. It's so cool. 
That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's just to bring you in. Yeah. Um, I also, I don't know, some, some people have different views on, like, um, counseling and, like, therapy for kids. Um, mm -hmm. But, I don't know, I, I nanny a kid uh, who goes to therapy, and... Um, I've just been with them this summer, but to see the, the improvement that's happened throughout the summer, and I think a lot of it goes towards her therapist, just because they have someone to talk to who's just a third party, really only hears their story, and, you know, who's like, will take the time to really listen to them and offer advice, and um, my younger brother that was bullied at school, he saw he went to a counselor and it really helped him just kind of kind of change his outlook on things and kind of just help him get over his challenges. Oh, that's good. So, that. mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think counseling for me is that it will be a good idea, especially if it's a severe enough bullying because sometimes bullying really affects children or people meant in general just very much cognitively and mentally. So I think they need help getting over that. Yeah, that's true. That's good that he wasn't scared to go to a counselor because sometimes kids are scared because there's like a stigma going to a counselor and talking about things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was open to it, which is good. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like what I got from it, is just kind of the different interventions we could use to help with it. Yeah, well, I think another thing that helps is like teaching the child to like stand up for themselves. Because that's what got my brother to stop bull being bullied was like, because this bully, he was a weird bully. Um, he would like blame things on my brother even though this, because this kid was a klutz. <laughs> and so he'd be like, oh, he'd blame my brother for doing it and stuff like that. And so finally, my brother, I think he like elbowed him or something. So not he didn't like do anything too harsh or anything. And the kid quit because he realized he was finally standing up to himself, up to the bully, you know. And so I think that's another thing. Like you don't always have to like hit or anything. You can just say something. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I think, oh yeah, I just agree with what you said. It just, yeah. <laughs> yeah I agree. So teach these children to um, stand up for himself and not be a doormat. So that's a good counsel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Trisha? What did you research? I um, picked shyness because, um, mainly because um, when I was in school, I was um, really shy. I didn't start talking in, in school until I was in high school. And one of the people um, I interviewed, um, her her son was the same way. Uh, he was really shy in school for a long time. So um, I, I found that some, an intervention could be that a teacher could assign um, a shy student, um, like someone assign him a friend and have a, some, one of his classmates be a friend to him and um, have, sit next to him during lunchtime or snack time and and, um, and out, when they go outside they can play together um, on the slide or something like that. And so I noted I also noticed that one of my kids is kind of shy in my preschool class and so I did the same thing for him. I um, has, I assigned someone to be his friend and a little buddy, and so it seems to be working so far. And um, and so, and I've been doing. I'm currently doing some research, and I, I'm going into um, parent. There's a. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, my roommate is like about to fall. She's trying to go to room. I'm sorry. I just wrote half my research paper. I need to walk for a minute. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and uh, so I'm going through some a parenting magazine to see like some some other get some ideas on how to help 
help children who are shy as well. But I think it's important, like for um, interventions and people that people that can help, like family members can help them um, teach them how teach their children how to speak in public and uh, maybe invite some friends over and things along that nature. And it's also important for teachers to help out and like watch what they say and not make fun of the ch a shy child and um, be kind to them so that. Because that helps the um, other children be nice to the shyer higher holding. So. so, and that's all I've found so far. So. Yeah, well, like, I think even another thing is like, you know how in church children give talks? Like, I think that's an awesome thing. And I love how you also pointed out, like, a sign of buddy. Because I think those two things are really good. Because that way the child is going to learn to get comfortable around at least one person and then they can build off of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's cool. That's a good idea. I like how you were able to um, apply what you found, how you said in your preschool, how you did that in your preschool as a kid. I think that's really neat how you could actually like, use what the information you found. Yeah, thank you. So I think we kind of covered the topics because um, we. I'm just looking here. So, um, based on everything that we've all shared, what are some common things that we that we kind of have between what we've discussed? Um, like I think all, all three of ours had the common element of environment for yeah. like helping the child grow um, and just influence of peers too. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think the environment is one of the biggest things. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. And Another thing was to have is like providing guidance. Another common thing instead of just doing it for the child, but <laughs> presenting opportunities. Yeah, I think that that's something that's super important to remember uh, when you are a parent. I guess. Um, I just noticed with nannying, I like forget kids take a lot of, they take their time to get their shoes on, they take their time to make their bed, like everything just takes forever. So I like how you said you kind of got to make time to do that stuff and you got to uh, provide opportunity to instead of just do it for the kids because they're not going to learn unless you provide that opportunity. Yeah, providing time, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I know that's something that I'm going to struggle with just because I like to, I don't know, I'm always like, okay, let's go, 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 go. Um, 
so it's hard to like just kind of step back and look for those teaching opportunities and just teach in the moment. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how kids learn the best too. It's not like you can just tell them. It's more hands-on learning is what really sticks to them. In this book that we've been reading, The Punished by Rewards, it talks a lot about that, like taking opportunities instead of giving them rewards, just um, take take a minute or two to teach them, okay, is this correct or not, <laughs> or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Now, Tom is like, a really... He makes you think with all his, I read, um, I think it was Unconditional Parenting oh, is right. one of his other books I've read. Um, it just, it really makes you think, have like a different perspective on that type of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Sorry, what? Is there anything else we need to talk about or discuss? Um, it just... So, so we just kind of got to summarize the highlight, highlights of our group's conversation, which I feel like we kind of just did when we picked out the, yeah. the common, you know, common things we found. Um, but, I don't know, does someone want to... Summary, make a summary real quick or explain what we talked about. I can do it. Mm -hmm. Shoot. Oh, here's. What? Uh, Just so, sharing. Sharing. Sorry. So basically, we, um, we talked about like all our topics, like we talked about the bullying and sharing and shyness, and then um, we talked about interventions and how different people can help um, children overcome these. And so. You guys gave good advice. Um, I don't know anyone. Any last minute you want to add to the video? Or? Mm. I can't think of anything. <laughs> no, I, I think we did pretty good. So. Wait, okay, I'll stop the broadcast so I can send the link.